Hello everybody, this is Christian from Blue vs. Orange TCG coming back to you with another post-commentary match for Character Quest Snapdragon Edition. This time we got our second re-edition of the Snapdragon deck uh, that we were pilot that we've been working on for the past like week and a half or so. Uh, this time as you notice we don't have Horrible on the list anymore, but we got Bonsai Tron. So we're here on the right rocking Snapdragon, Bonsai Tron, and Night Racer. And then we're playing against Ogar from the Vector Sigma Discord, playing a, a four wide horrible pierce list, orange black. So this is gonna be a really interesting matchup for us. This, we are a slanted more as a blue control list, so we should have um, a harder matchup going up against this pierce list. But I think we have. Um, I think some of the things that Snapdragon does, also like having natural sturdy and like have playing lots of reactions, is gonna help out with that. So we're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna go first. We're gonna flip Snapdragon uh, to his uh, anti draw side, and we're gonna go in with Night Racer into. Let's see, who we're going to? We're going into the plane for that sweet, sweet one damage. Uh, we're going to drop an anti for a for uh, for a Soldier Blaster. Uh, I do have the video going at a faster speed than before. I just think um, that might just be a little bit better for uh, matches, just so there's not going to be like long periods of time where we're waiting for people to like make their turns like the other matches. So hopefully uh, this goes smoother and it's a little bit more uh, interesting to watch. So Ogre's going to flip horrible and he's going to play a fight for position. And he's going to start slinging horrible damage everywhere. So he can actually sling the damage into the Snapdragon right now because I am not in sturdy mode currently. And he's just going to send uh, Sky Shadow Plane in with Bold 4 into Night Racer. Uh, only defending 3 here, it looks like, on my end. Uh, he's got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, we're going to start off with a 5, so that's, that's, a, that's a sizable amount of damage right there. Uh, I missed what he picked up there, but I think it was a Nobles Blaster. So we're gonna drop, we're gonna flip our boy Bonsai Tron here. So I will say Bonsai Tron has been such an amazing partner uh, in this list compared to Horrible. I think Bonsai Tron is such a really, really cool character. Uh, because we have no Autobots, he is a leader, which will come up here in a little bit. So let's see, I'm just mulling around what's in my hand right now. I do have the Soldier's Blaster. I might even consider dropping it here. Um, and probably not, depending if I go in with uh, a bonsai tron because it's just gonna be the plane so i do go i do drop the soldier's blaster here we are gonna valiant effort so curious oh are we oh do i misplay here oh there might be a technical misplay here Let's see i'm swinging bonsai tron into the plane i dealt brawn one and how much am i attacking for because i'm technically only attacking for let's see five eight nine because we are the same see okay so i made a mistake here so this is this is huge uh, we got, got this on camera. So Soldier's Blaster only gives you plus the plus three against a character with a different faction than you are. Um, but I was mistaken. I think I was thinking it was going to be on Snapdragon over Bonsai Tron. I gave myself the plus three when I shouldn't have. So Ogar, I apologize for that. So there is already a misplay going on in this game, but we're just going to have to go on with that. So I accidentally, we accidentally killed this guy shadow ahead of us. Uh, but we do Let's see, he's going to wedge formation here to heal off Brawn. And he's gonna put that Noble's Blaster onto Braun here. So he's just gonna swing for it looks like seven pierce six. Yep, seven pierce six in the Bonsitron. That's a it's a again a very sizable hit from the Braun. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed by that soldier's blaster play. I, I, you don't even know. Uh we're gonna pick up that pocket processor there. So this it definitely makes the rest of the match feel a little bit interesting, but you know, we're just gonna go on with it because these things these things do happen from time to time. Uh, we're gonna play the pocket processor onto Snapdragon, which is good. This deck definitely feels like it relies pretty heavily on its pocket processor, but just because you do end up wanting a lot of cards in hand for like being able to play extra secrets and make sure you have an armor for Bonsai Tron, things of the sort. We're gonna set a secret. And we're just gonna send Snapdragon into Bron here, just for just for seven. It looks like oh for eight. Okay, there we go. So if I were to go back and do that differently, I definitely would have uh, put the Soldier Blaster onto the Snapdragon swing instead, but. All as well that ends well. <coughs> oh. All right, and he's gonna put an immersed in shadows onto the horrible. Immersed in shadows is really good in this list because now he's gonna get to be able to attack out, and I won't be able to hit his horrible when we're all on top because he's gonna have stealth on top, and he's gonna slam down a belligerence here. Not looking good. Not looking good. Belligerence is always really good in this scenario when you get two full attacks in. Uh, I would assume he's going to try to take out Bonsai Tron here. And he's going to be starting off with Sea Spray first. Let's see. Um, I also didn't flip a tough, an extra card here for the tough one I really got for Night Racer. 
No blues, uh, so we're just gonna be taking the Pierce 3, it looks like, and now he's gonna send a horrible. I do have an end hostility, which is gonna cancel out the belligerence effect. And he's just gonna be swinging for Pierce 2, it looks like. Let's see, 11, there we go. I'm not gonna pick up any greens there. It wasn't too bad for the belligerence attack, we still have all of our characters standing, so that's pretty good for us. We'll draw, draw for processor. I'm actually considering putting in a second pocket processor in the list. There are definitely some cards. The deck feels a lot better than our first draft, but I definitely think um, it still has like some things to kind of give it a little bit, a little bit more consistency, and some cards that we don't really like to play too. I, that I've seen in hand that I just didn't really want to play at all. It looks like I'm in the tank here. It looks like I'm trying to consider how hard to go in with Night Racer here. I'm guessing. Because it looks like I do really want to take out this brawn, I'm pretty sure. Let's see what I do here. Looks like I'm doing some math here. Hopefully some correct math to that Soldier's Blaster this time. <laughs> if we're going to Scoundrel's Blast to the Night Racer, and it looks like we're going to set a secret. Here. I think I'm asking how many blues are in the scrap pile. To make sure, because I really need to make sure that, uh, excuse me, I need to make sure that uh, Nairister goes in and gets the brawn here. Yeah, looks like we just swing. We got the Pierce 4 there. So we, I didn't need to flip to, uh, to bot mode there for sure, but you know, that's okay. Sometimes it's good to, even if it feels like, even if it's like after attack, you felt like you didn't need to make a certain move to ensure you get a kill in. Sometimes it's just good to have that peace of mind because if you do miss, sometimes it just changes the whole tempo of the game. So doing plays like this where I think it would have been better to probably flip to a uh, Snapdragon's alt mode here. Uh, but again, I think that's totally okay. As you're noticing, he's not flipping C spray at all to alt mode. And that's because if he does, he would have to draw two, scrap one, and then scrap another one for Snapdragon. So he doesn't end up netting a card at all. And so this is, again, another really strong point uh, of Snapdragon being able to turn, uh, kind of turn off these really strong drawing abilities that a lot of the metagame kind of encompasses here. So that secret I played was an Infiltrate, he didn't play any orange actions, and it looks like I got a Scoundrel's Blaster here. Oh no, it was a Covert Armor. Okay. Covert Armor's really been really awesome in this list, actually, because there's been a lot of specialists in the metagame lately. And Covert Armor being able to play, be put on Bonzotron and Snapdragon in their respective modes is really cool. We're gonna flip Snapdragon. Uh, we're gonna flip Bonzitron. Look at their hand because we have an armor. Uh, he just has a single bashing, bashing shield. I don't think I play a secret action here because Bonzitron also allows you, if you have an armor, you can look at your opponent's hand and uh, play a secret action. <clears throat> all is all part of the ability. Looks like I just send in here. <coughs> Looks like it's gonna be for eight. Nice chunk of damage there. So if he's able to go, if if he's able to draw into a uh, a black card at all, he he'd be able to take out uh, the bonsai tron here. But he, he would have to draw it. It doesn't look like he did here. <laughs> he's just gonna play the bastion shield on for value uh, to get rid of my covert armor. Doesn't seem bad. He's gonna move one from horrible. The Bonsai Tron puts me at one health left and just swings to ensure I get the kill. Again, to ensure he gets the kill, right? Because there we go. He only flips one black icon. Uh, if he didn't move with that one to Bonsai Tron, he wouldn't have killed me. So again, it doesn't feel like you want to do a move like that because you feel like you're just going to guarantee the kill anyway. But, you know, in that scenario, if he didn't move, he he wouldn't have killed the Bonsai Tron. So it was actually a really good play. Again, sometimes the... The inoptimal plays I kind of feel like the best plays. It can sometimes be the best plays, as weird as that is to say. But that that's something that kind of comes with like experience and seeing things and experiencing when you when you undershot, when you underkill something, when you think you've got it for sure. You you kind of like you get that right. So again, we got a big hand size here thanks to this pocket processor early on. It's it's generated so much value for us. Um, it looks like. See, I have no weapon on the Snapdragon here. I think I'm probably just gonna end up killing the uh, 
uh, the, the C spray here, because I should be able to if I have a weapon in hand, or at least some sort of buff. Uh, we're going to be flipping Snapdragon into all mode here, yep, because it looks like I'm going to be shooting to kill the C spray. Uh, we play another Cobalt Armor onto, onto the Snapdragon. And then we just set a secret. So I'm only attacking for 7. I need an orange pip to guarantee the kill onto Sea Spray. And we do hit it. And we do get the bold one from Night Racer being in bot mode. And we have a secret down. So we actually do swing for 9. Uh, which gets the Sea Spray. Uh, so now now in uh, Snapdragon's all mode. is actually like a really, really good anti-horrible card. Because 1, he can't, you can't uh, ping Snapdragon because he has Sturdy. <clears throat> or at least ping him for one, because he's got the sturdy, and his ult mode also prevents characters from, or from enemies being able to move damage counters onto other characters. So he can't even flip ult mode to, uh, horrible to ult mode to move a damage. So he's, he's in a, Ogre's in a pretty precarious situation here. Again, it might have been different if I didn't, uh, mess up the, uh, uh, the Soldier's Blaster math with Bonsai Tron going into Sky Shadow Plane, but I think... It only would have been two less. I probably would have just had a, a little bit less value of a kill uh, early on. I don't think it would have mattered as much here because I, I as of now I'm pretty far ahead here. So he's just gonna move and deal one to Night Racer here. I think he's just gonna swing to the Night Racer. Looks like for five. No Pierce and it looks like I block it. So he actually doesn't even end up killing the. Uh, the Night Racer here, which is rather unfortunate, and my secret was the Sab Arms. <clears throat> and I get to attack out here, so we're just going to Opportune Offensive the Night Racer. Opportune Offensive is a very strong card in this list, being able to play on Night Racer and Bonsai Tron. Uh, it although it is a weird list because you can't play it onto Snapdragon, so part of your pumps actually kind of are dead for your main guy, which is kind of interesting. Going in for four, six, nine into him so he's gonna be defending for six take six and we should be able to finish the job here with snapdragon yep and horrible goes down and he's just left with Kreb. so this game this game's pretty much over here uh because um he won't be able to finish off this incredibly healthy snapdragon with just a two health to attack crab here <clears throat> again the game i think might have turned out a little bit different if i didn't mess up uh, early on with that soldier's blaster however i think i think it still would have ended up with me uh taking the win here just because of how healthy my snapdragon is currently i just don't think uh anything would have helped him at that point uh just because of how like how much damage i was able to sustain, sustain off of my snapdragon so we're gonna take game one here we're gonna go to game two uh i am not gonna sideboard any cards here not much of my sideboard i would actually sideboard into this um the lord megatron uh, sideboard plan is not very good against this Pierce list. The, the Snapdragon offers way more value than Lord Megatron does at this point, so I'm not going to side into any other tank cards. Uh, the only card I could, could I could see siding into is a Hollow Matter, uh, but I would have to take out the Soldier's Blaster, and I think I'd rather just have the Soldier's Blaster, ironically enough. Uh, that may or may not be the right call here, but I think but that's what we're going to stick with, so we're not even going to sideboard any characters or battle cards uh, going into game two here. Looks like Ogre siding some battle cards though, so that's always good. It's always good to practice siding into battle cards. Uh, sideboarding, in my opinion, is one of the hardest parts of this game. And if you play the game, if you if you played like matches with sideboarding enough, you've kind of like you'll you'll pick up on that right away. Like as soon as you make a sideboard, you think it's good. And, you, and once the game two, and once you have to start siding for like games two and three, you look at your sideboard and you're like, what what do I take out? <laughs> like what do I I can put this in, but what do I take out for it to kind of get back to my normal deck size? And that's that's a that's a tough one. That's a definitely a tough one, and it's something that's something that I actually make a really good video about. So Ogre is gonna go, gonna be going first here. He's gonna be swinging Brawn into Bonsai Tron, I believe here. Uh, Bonsai Tron hitting for a huge defense against a sweet Pierce Four. It looks like not much you can uh, not much you can do about that. So we're gonna draw here. This is also why I really wanted to go first was uh, so I could sustain one of my bigger guys from getting a brawn attack so early on. Uh, looks like we're not going to play any cards and we're just going to flip Snapdragon and send Night Racer in. Uh, just for a one. He's going to drop an Imp Shield for Noble's Blaster. Again, that's a really good card against us. That Sea Spray being able to get to um, base 5 Pierce 4 uh, against one of our Decepticons is really strong. And then he's also going to be flipping black cards. So this list is very... 
This is, I really like Ogre's list. Ogre's list here for this Pierce list. It's actually, it, it actually runs a lot more oranges than a normal like Pierce list would normally run. Uh, but that's so he can kind of accommodate on the aggro matchups as well, because oftentimes like the orange, the Pierce decks lose to the hard aggro matchups. Uh, he's gonna combat dagger and fight for position the plane, doing ping damage onto uh, Night Racer. It looks like, or all oh, onto Bonsaitron, and that plane only swung for five Pierce five. It looked like so that actually was not a very good swing for considering he had bolt five. <clears throat> And oh, let's see, is it one more damage because of Sea Spray? Looks like it's one more. Because Sea Spray does give the highest character stars on your team a plus one attack in that mode. Uh, oh, nope. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember. Uh, he did have an extra attack, but he still only had Pierce 5. So it, it's still only swung for 5. Which is still pretty good. You can't necessarily complain about that too much. Let's see, I got it. Let's see, I got another early pocket processor on that's going to be really good for me. It's going to extend my value plays quite a bit. Uh, now I'm in this kind of tough situation because I want to save the Snapdragon here um, because he's a really good like end game like tank to kind of get through and beat down the rest of the of Ogar's team. And he takes off uh, drawing cards with Sea Spray, uh, which, you know, these orange blacklists really, really want. So, but because Bonsai Tron is so injured here, I have to send the Snapdragon in. I believe into the plane here. The plane is just too much of a threat not to, to ignore. Just for seven, so he's just gonna take the five. I'm gonna drop that uh, ghost shield, what looks like to be a covert armor. Uh, let's see, Sea Spray is a specialist, even though she uh, Sea Spray does have pierce. So the plus, the extra plus five for covert armor doesn't come up too often in this matchup here. So yep, here comes that Noble's Blaster. Probably just gonna KO the Night Racer here, I, I presume, since he'll probably have it. Yep, there goes the Rock Toss, putting me at six. And more than likely just gonna be sending off Night Racer to the Shadow Realm here. You can see all that incremental value that Horrible's gotten onto Bonsai Tron. He's already done three damage to Bonsai Tron without ever uh, attacking them with Horrible. Uh, just from playing cards and dealing damage to everyone else. So yep, he flips and moves another one. So you can, if you haven't seen Horrible in action before, Horrible has kind of dropped off a lot since uh, since post Wave Five meta game, but he definitely is still a very very strong character and should not be slept upon. So he swings for it looks like Pierce Six, killing Night Racer off the board. And then we're gonna draw and drop our pocket processor here. We have this really awkward situation. I think we need to kill this guy should have playing here uh, to do it. To, to kind of just do anything, we need to get that guy off the board. So I'm probably, I, th I believe this is also another uh, section of me where I'm quote unquote in the tank to try to figure out exactly the math I want to do. And, and as you know before, I'm not too good. I'm, I'm not too great at math, so I gotta make sure I get all this right. So we're gonna play a covert armor onto the Bonsai Tron. He is melee in that mode, so we can do that. Okay, looks like I'm considering action here. So we're gonna flip Bonsai Tron to alt mode and look at his hand here. He's got a wedge and a belligerence. Let's see, I believe, let's see, do I end up playing an action here? Or a secret action off the Bonsai Tron flip? That's the question. Just gonna dig into my scrap a little bit. Uh, looks like I don't, I'm just gonna play the bigger they are and swing into Sky Shadow Plane. Hoping I kill here. Uh, he gets a blue, which actually doesn't even matter. Because, again, I did my mouth wrong. Because Bonsai Tron has one less attack in alt mode, he actually would have survived the attack without a blue anyway. But the blue just makes it even more of a, like, just a problem for us, right? Because now he's going to be able to swing out with Horrible here. And we already have a guy that's almost dead, uh, a Night Race off the board, and he only has... And we still haven't killed a character. So we're in a really, really tough spot here. Scoundrel's Blaster, the horrible here, it is very likely that Bonsai Tron could die here. Uh, he's gonna play the Wedge. He, he ends up not playing the Belligerence here, uh, which I think some would end up would just want to play the Belligerence, but I can understand why he doesn't. Uh, because if he does kill the Bonsai Tron here without the Belligerence, he'll be able to get like a three-man swing next turn into the Snapdragon, which is gonna be like huge. <laughs> Dealing another one to Bonsai Tron here. Uh, 
there's a double orange, so horrible sign for four, six, seven, eight, nine, it looks like. Oh, ten. Ten, because uh, horrible has the highest stars on the field, tied with uh, sketch out plane, because of Sea Spray's ability. And that's going to take out my uh, my poor Bondi Tron here. So it's one against four. Let's see what Snapdragon can do here. I draw my two cards for Pocket Processor. I definitely, if I had like a Camion Crash in hand, this would definitely be a little bit nicer for me. <clears throat> Honestly, I think in this mode I have to swap to, uh, let's see, I'm not playing a secret action here. Uh, yep, looks like I play a secret action. I do play an espionage and counter espionage. If I would have known, I would have probably just played that. Uh, to get rid of the belligerents, um, and then we're just gonna swing and finish off the plane here. We can't let that plane survive, not at all. So yeah, he's gonna draw, and now he's gonna flip Sea Spray to all mode. He's actually gonna draw some cards here now because I'm not in the, the uh, anti-draw mode anymore. Which again, it's gonna be pretty big in that. Uh, orange decks, especially orange black decks, definitely need cards in hand to like make decent plays. Otherwise, they just they just have like really small value characters here. So he puts a grenade launcher on the brawn and he attempts to move with horrible, but then uh, I reminded him that he can't because it's not dragons in alt mode. So he just sticks horrible into the uh, into the higher attack mode, which makes sense. <coughs> uh, debating on whether to play the secret action here. It looks like I don't. And he opted not to play the belligerents here, which I think is a really interesting play. I'm not sure why he chose not to, but I think I think it's fine not to at the same time here. Uh, he probably was concerned about the secret I had laid out, which ended up being a dad. And let's see, he's attacking for four, six, seven, eight, pierce one. And I'm defending for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, it looks like, so I just take one there. And yikes, I should have dadded this attack in front of the horrible, because I'll be taking like six, it looks like. Going to uh, not six, but definitely going to seven here. So as you can see, Snapdragon took three attacks really well, only coming out with about seven damage on him. That's that's kind of the this is the tankiness of Snapdragon kind of coming to fruition here. Like it like like again, I can't I can't stress how like tanky Snapdragon is as a character. It, he he honestly becomes kind of a threat once he's loaded up with like a, sna a scoundrel's blaster here, and it just becomes really difficult to kill. Uh, so here it looks like I'm swinging for 10, send the secret. And I think I just send swing into the brawn here because again I need to kill. I just need to kill stuff off the board and brawn's the next closest target. And swing for 10. Doesn't flip a blue and we're able to get the brawn exact here. We're still in a really, really poor position here. Uh, the likelihood of us winning this match is still pretty low. Especially now that uh, Ogar does have a little bit more cards in his hand to play with after that sea spray flip. He's gonna be flipping Sea Spray to his Pierce mode. See, it looks like Ogar's just sitting in the tank here. To again, totally okay. And not gonna play another action, no? No belligerent still. Again, he, I think he just fears the secrets and I don't flip a single blue here. And he gets a really, really big meaty swing. And I go to 13. So that's that's pretty brutal. One, two, three, four, five. He's attacking for four, six, seven, eight, nine, and that gets me exact there. I'm curious. Do I mention? Do I see what the secret is? I bet it was an infiltrate. Yeah, it was an infiltrate, which again is is good that Ogre didn't play the belligerents because then he would have walked right into the infiltrate and saved it for later. So uh, it, it just goes to show, like at that point, he didn't need the belligerents to win. Uh, but it it's still pretty. It, it, those games are still pretty interesting. Um, I believe I'm going to be going first here. It, it helps a lot when you go first against a deck like this because you don't you don't want Bron to get a good like first turn attack into uh, into either Bonsai Tron or Snapdragon. And again, looks like we're not going to be sideboarding any cards. We already decided the cards we needed to sideboard into game two. Like there's a small dip in Ogar's camera quality. Again, that's probably just my internet. Uh, part of uh, part of the joys and struggles that come with webcam uh, games during this COVID era. But you know, it's I've really enjoyed 
of being able to just play these games so consistently with everybody. So we're gonna be going first, we drop for turn, and we're probably just gonna do the standard play of flipping Snap Dragon and sending in Night Racer. <clears throat> uh, for looks like probably into Sketch Out Plane for another one. But again, we get another early pocket processor. We've just been hitting them really good this game. So we just a handle blast for the pocket processor. Uh, definitely, definitely good value there. You cannot ignore that. I believe here Ogre makes a mention that I've been able to hit that pocket processor early on every game, and he's definitely not wrong. Uh, it's and some of this deck kind of wants to hit on. So uh, grenade launcher, scatch out of plane is gonna be a pretty big swing here. And again, I only attack for three. So four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve going into night racer. So I'll be taking nine off the bat right away. So this is this is pretty intense here already. Uh, that that sky shadow plane attack, even without the other piece to form sky shadow, is no joke. Uh, we play that pocket processor onto Snapdragon, of course, and it looks like I'm debating on how we want to approach this. Uh, we'll flip Bonsai Tron. I don't mind sending Bonsai Tron in a second here because he's he's not damaged this time around. Uh, looks like we just set a secret action and we swing Bonsai Tron in. Oh, oh, I'm debating. Yep, yep, we just go for it. And get the bold one because he has bold one and eight and just five. We do see a Soldier Plus here. We're going to pick that up for a Covert Armor. Now, it might have been better to just keep the Covert Armor so, so I can have an armor for Bonsai Tron, but I think just having weapons is going to be more important here. And there it is. He ramming speeds by Pocket Processor. So that was, so that's definitely a huge play uh, for Ogar. It basically wasted my upgrade action, and, uh, and I won't be able to draw any extra... I wasn't able to draw any extra cards there, so he's just going to deal a damage to uh, Night Racer by playing the Combat Dagger onto Brawn, which gets a horrible trigger, and we're going to Stab Arms the Combat Dagger. Uh, not a huge defense swing again. Uh, haven't been doing a lot of good defense uh, flips this the, uh, this match. It looks like so, uh, but we only take th three. It looks like because we're defending four and attack for seven. Not too bad. Uh, we're gonna we got a hunker down here with the one of hunker down coming in, getting a scrapper gauntlet to draw a card and look at uh, Ogar's hand. The Hunker Down is just such a strong value play in this, so he's got his own pocket processor and a grenade launcher in his hand. So he's got some really strong upgrade plays. No black card, so that makes us really happy to see. Um, unfortunately, the uh, the Night Racer is still going to go down to the horrible move and flip. I, you could I could have opted not to uh, flip Bonsai Tron and flip Snapdragon instead to ensure that he can't play the move, but then he just would have drawn cards and probably drawn into a black pip anyway, and I wasn't sure if he had a black pip anyway, so uh, I just had to risk, uh, or just accept the risk that uh, uh, Night Racer's gonna get KO'd out of combat here. He actually drops the pocket processor for Bashing Shield here, which is really interesting. I wonder if he's gonna Bashing Shield the Scrapper Gauntlets off of uh, Bonsai Tron. It's really interesting, interesting to see Scrapper Gauntlets kind of make another rise as a card in the metagame, just because it's, it, the upgrade, the, uh, the metagame is really upgrade heavy right now, and so being able to play this to get rid of a weapon and give you an extra defense is super, super valuable. And it could potentially draw you a card. It just it just offers so much value. Um, this this one wave one card from way back in the day that I hadn't seen play in a while. That this card is it, I really enjoy this card. Same with Crushing Size. Uh, Drill Arms is pretty cool too, but that one sees a little bit less play. So we're just setting a secret and swinging in with the Snapdragon. Or no, we already swung with the Snapdragon here. Uh, so yeah, he precision fires uh, Night Racer here, and I don't think he's gonna optim flip horrible here, which is gonna be, which I think is really interesting. Uh, no, he does. Yep, he's just gonna move one to Bonsai Tron here. So I think he's gonna try to kill Bonsai Tron here, which definitely makes a ton of sense. So Bonsai Tron does get a tough one in alt mode. It's gonna be Pierce 4, yep, go to 10. And then we get the horrible swing here, and we're gonna dad here. So it's pretty. It's pretty likely, yeah, so only Pierce 2, unless he had a white and three black pips, we, our Bonsai Tron wasn't going to die in this scenario here, uh, which again is pretty crazy. Um, but we're still we're still looking kind of rough here. He's got a pretty healthy field versus our one health uh, left Bonsai Tron and Snapdragon. So now we have to consider exactly like what we're, what, like what type of play we want to do, right? Because we could send the Bonsai Tron in to ensure we get the attack. Um, into one of his characters and then just accept the fact that he's going to die from the horrible trigger next turn because uh, even though he's got one card in hand that's more than likely what's going to happen here 
Or we can send Snapdragon in uh, to try to KO the Brawn right away versus having to deal with the Brawn later. Uh, some interesting plays here because I don't, I think it's tough to say, right? Because if you do that line of play, you're going to lose the Bonsaitron attack, but then he'll only get two attacks into Snapdragon. Versus if you attack with Bonsaitron, not kill something, and then he gets to kill it out of combat, and then get, and then he gets a chance for all three of his characters to get a hit into Snapdragon. Even though it's not all at once, it's still like incrementally, right? So I think, so either way, this Bonsaitron is pretty much going to die. And it looks like I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just accepting the fact that I'm not going to get that Bonsaitron swing and just going to go straight into the brawn here. Uh, with the bigger they are, um, it, the bigger they are is definitely overkill. I would have gotten it without having to play the plus two from the bigger they are. But I believe I asked him and he had no blues in his scrap pile. And I remember seeing none in his hand, so I just had to, I couldn't risk him getting a, a blue and surviving here. So I just went for it. I could have also flipped uh, Snapdragon to uh, this mode to kind of help him keep him alive a little bit more. But um, uh, the Fusion Boar is an amazing top deck here. A uh, huge, huge top deck for Ogar. Because he's swinging for 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, pure 6. So yeah, we'll be taking 6 here. That's It's a huge swing. And then the Horrible Gun. It's going to be two here. Okay. Dropping the bolster here for. Uh, looked like a, a covert armor, I believe it was. Bolster is one of the cards I'm definitely taking out right away. I have not enjoyed playing the bolster. I thought it'd be kind of cool to see because we're a little bit more armor focused and it's a, kind of a niche secret action that we don't have to necessarily use our action for if we fill up a Snapdragon. Oh, it was a Sparring Gear. But it was really bad. It, 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 it was. It's honestly been super awful this whole time. Uh, you know, we're gonna espionage orange. We're gonna get rid of that grenade launcher that we saw a while ago. I'm playing Spartan Gear here, and I believe I actually flipped Snapdragon to straight mode this time around. Uh, because even though I'm not gonna be killing anything, he only has, uh, he has no cards in hand, so he doesn't, he's gonna have a lot more limited choices on what to kind of keep for a sea spray. If we flip here, um, looks like I'm still going through my scraps, so I'm still kind of deciding if that's the play I'm gonna go for or not. Looks like that is what I'm gonna do here. And we're just gonna send it in for 10 into Sea Spray. Sea Spray is definitely the bigger threat than Horrible in this scenario right here, because Sea Spray does have the natural the natural pierce and he can draw cards. Versus Horrible against Snapdragon right now in either mode really can't really do anything currently. So Sea Spray is our big target to get rid of. We do get an orange, so we're gonna be swinging for 11. Of course, doesn't kill it, puts it to nine, which is still like, it's still not too bad. Uh, if we survive this round here, we should be able to get the Sea Spray pretty easily. And yep, he's gonna flip the Sea Spray. Gonna try to get some value of the cards he draws. He's gonna drop a Rock Toss, which makes sense because it won't do anything against the Snapdragon. <laughs> so Golgar's just kind of sitting in the tank here, just kind of thinking through his plays, which makes a ton of sense. Looks like he's opting just to play the the Kamen Crash here. He could have flipped. Uh, no, he couldn't because he flipped the Sea Spray. So he actually ends up doing two damage to his horrible uh, to deal one, just one from, to Snapdragon, just because Sturdy takes the two from Kamen down to one. And then he he did get another Fusion Board, and he's putting that straight onto Sea Spray and swinging in again. So again, another top deck Sea Spray feels really really good. Puts me at four health left. Horrible goes in. Up for four, six, seven, Pierce two. I do have tough three here and the dad. And it looks like we're just going to be taking the one. Yep. So we're going from 12 to 13. Again, like I said, this is another, this is just a really good moment to express like Snapdragon is kind of this underappreciated character because he's just, he's just so bulky. He just is so hard to kill. Sturdy, tough one. Once he has another armor on, a secret action. Even though this Pierceless, he's, there's just, he's, he, Ogar's just kind of struggling to kind of get through this, this wall of Snapdragon here. So I draw a card here. I'm definitely going to be KOing the Sea Spray. There's no doubt about it. So there's no reason for me to flip to the other mode. Uh, I play a Crushing Size just to draw a card and see what I get. I'm pretty sure it's a pocket process as I drew here. So I just I just swing it for 10. Get the Sea Spray off the board. Uh, and see. And just kind of see what uh, Ogar can kind of muster up with this top deck here. And it looks like it's a Combat Dagger. He's going to flip to the uh, 
to his uh, non ping himself mode and swing. He does get Pierce 3 here, so it's going to be 5 Pierce 3. I definitely block more than 5, but I'm going to be taking the Pierce 3, which goes down to Pierce 2 for sturdy. So we're, we're going to be hanging on with just one health left, sitting at 15. So that's so this is this is down to the wire, so I got one health left on my Snapdragon. <laughs> the video is Snapdragon can yep, easily kill the Horrible here, because Horrible, even with 3 defense, only has 6 health left, and I'm swinging for at least 10. So Horrible's going to go down, and now it's down to Kreb. So basically what Ogar needs here, he needs a weapon to kind of get through the sturdy here. Um... Unfortunately, he just gets an Merchant Shadows and he needs two Black Pips here. Which he unfortunately does not get. He only gets the Pierce 1, which we're going to just go down to Sturdy. Uh, go down to 0 for Sturdy. And we're just going to swing and crack back into the crab. Those were some very exciting games. Super down to the wire. That that last game could have been anyone's game if Ogre just uh, had a better top deck at the end there. Of course, top deck and two Fusion Boards kind of got him anyway. But anyway, the deck is going really, really well. I'm really excited to kind of showcase my next kind of revamp of the deck. Uh, I'm really excited to play this Saturday. I think the deck is great. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day. All right. Take care.